The controls area contains two panels labeled Tools and Modifiers. These panels are where you modify the settings of a node within the composition. There are several types within Tools, and this video will show you the basic operation. There are several standard controls along the top of most tools within Fusion. Along the top is a small title bar for the window that displays the tool's name and a button to collapse or open the window. The control header is a good place to access the tool's context menu. Directly under the header in order from left to right is the pin, settings 1 through 6, pass through, lock, and cache to disk. Pin is used to pin particular nodes controls in the tools tab. If using the standard preferences, the normal behavior is for the node's controls to be hidden whenever another tool is made active. The pin will prevent the tool from being hidden. This is useful when pick whipping expressions and when you need to access a tool frequently. The settings 1 through 6 are used to store a version of the tool which can be recalled later. If you have a design that is something you want to go back to at a later time, Simply change the S1 to S2 and begin your next design. If you want to return to the previous setting, just press S1 again. Pass through disables a node and will pass through the data to the next node. Lock will prevent any changes to the tool. A tool can be locked to prevent moving a critical camera or to prevent invalidating a disk cache. Enabling cache to disk will begin saving the node's output to your local storage for a quicker recall. This works especially well in tools that take a long time to render or for larger portions of your composition. Rather than rendering, the tool will load its results from the disk cache if available. The Tools tab below allows you to select between pages of controls if the tool has them available. The Common Controls Radioactive tab contains a number of controls common to each tool, such as motion blur settings and a blender slider to blend back to the incoming image of a node. The scripting gear offers several in-tool script areas that will process at different times throughout a tool's rendering process. Lastly, the Comments tab, which allows a user to enter comments or maintain notes specific to a tool. Most of the controls contain both the graphical user interface as well as a numeric input field. Most of these controls can be overdriven by entering a number larger or smaller than the default GUI limits. Animated values will be blue to indicate the control is attached to a spline, and green when on an existing keyframe. Instanced controls will be indicated by a green border drawn around them. Modifying these controls will also update the parent's nodes to the equivalent value. Slider controls are used to select a single value from the range of values. The artist can click and drag on the slider handle to adjust the value, or enter a new value manually into the edit box to the slider's left. Clicking on the gutter to the left or right of the handle will increase or decrease the value by a set amount. Holding down the controller shift key while clicking on the gutter will adjust the values by smaller or larger increments respectively. Clicking on the slider's handle directly also makes it possible to adjust the values using the left and right cursor keys. The control and shift modifiers can again be used to modify the value change to larger or smaller increments. If the slider has been altered from its default value, a small indicator will appear. Clicking on the circle will reset the slider to its default. Point controls are represented by crosshairs in the display views, as well as a set of X and Y values in the control area. Selecting the individual axis arrows in the view will constrain the movement to that axis. A thumb wheel control is identical to a slider except this control does not have a minimum or maximum value. Thumb wheel controls are typically used on angle parameters, although they do have other uses. To use a thumb wheel control, click on the center portion and drag left or right. Fine-tune the parameter by clicking the arrowheads at either end of the control. 
The artist can also click directly on the control, then use the left and right cursor arrow keys to adjust the control's values. As with the slider control, the control and shift modifiers can be used to increase or decrease the size of the control change. Values can also be entered directly into the edit box to the control's right. Range controls are used to specify a low value and a high value. To adjust the values, click and drag the handles on the end of the range bar. To adjust the high and low values of the range simultaneously, click and drag from the center of the range bar. Expand or contract the range symmetrically by holding down the control key and dragging either end of the range bar. The range control is actually two separate controls, a low range and a high range. These can be animated and modified individually. Checkboxes are controls that have either an on or off value. Clicking on the checkbox control will toggle the state between selected and non-selected. When the control is animated, a value of 0 means the control is off, while a value of 1 or greater will turn it on. Drop-down lists are used to select one option from a list of options. Clicking on the control will reveal the full list of available options for selection. Once the list is open, clicking on any of the entries in the list will cause the entry to be selected. Only one option can be selected at a time, and the currently selected option will be displayed in the control when the menu is closed. When a drop-down box is animated, the integer value 0 represents the first item in the selection, integer value 1 represents the second entry in the list, and so forth. Button arrays are groups of buttons that allow the artist to select a range of options. They are almost identical in function to the drop-down menu controls, except that in the case of a button array, it is possible to see all the available options at a glance. The color picker is displayed whenever a tool's parameter requires a color as its value. The selected color is shown in the swatch below the pick button. The swatch has two halves. The left half shows the color, and the right half shows the color overlaid on a checkerboard to visualize the transparency. The color picker is extremely flexible and has four different techniques for selecting and displaying colors. Clicking on the pick button will display the operating system's standard color selector dialog. This dialog can be then used to select a color and clicking OK will apply the color to the control. Clicking on the small arrow button above the pick button will reveal a color wheel with a luminance bar, which can be used to select a color. To select a color directly from the image display in one of Fusion's display views, click and hold the pick button. The cursor will change to an eyedropper tool. While still holding down the mouse button, move the eyedropper over the view. A pop-up swatch will appear above the mouse pointer showing the selected color and its values. When the color display is the one desired, release the mouse button to set that color. The color picker normally selects from a single pixel in the image. Adjust the size of the selection by holding down the control key and dragging while picking. The size change applies to all color pickers until the size is changed again. The gradient control is used to create colors that a gradient follows from start to finish using the keyframe colors set along the length of a bar. The gradient control is actually 9 or 10 controls in total, which are described below. The gradient type button array is used to select the method used to draw the gradient. Select from linear, reflect, square, cross, radial, and angle gradient types. The start and end position controls are represented by two crosshairs in the display views, as well as a set of X and Y controls. They determine where the gradient physically begins and ends. The gradient colors bar control is used to select the colors through which the gradient will transition when moving from the start position to the end position. Only two color positions are available by default, the start and end colors. To modify one of the colors, Select the triangle below the name of the bar. Use the color selector controls below to set the color. New colors are added to the gradient control by clicking beneath the gradient bar. The position of the colors can be adjusted by dragging on the triangle. To copy an existing color, hold the control key down before dragging the triangle. To remove a color, 
click drag the triangle straight up past the gradient bar or select the indicator and click on the red X button. Gradient interpolation method determines what color space is used to calculate the colors between keys. The offset control is used to offset the position of the gradient relative to the start and end markers. This control is most useful when used in conjunction with the repeat and ping pong modes. These three buttons are used to set the behavior of the gradient when the offset control scrolls the gradient past the start and end positions, one by one, two by two, three by three, four by four, 5x5 five five controls are the amount of sub-pixel position used when the edges of the gradients become visible in the repeat mode or when the gradient is animated. Higher settings will take significantly longer to render. LUTs are used to define a value over time or an input versus output color. A LUT by default will have a start and end point. These points can be modified by left clicking in the small box indicator and dragging with the mouse. Individual points can be added by clicking on an empty portion of the line and can be smoothed with the keyboard shortcut Control plus S or linearized with Shift plus L. Text areas can be selected with a left click and edited via keyboard. Standard cut, copy, and paste shortcuts Control plus X, Control plus C, Control plus V. Rollouts are used to collapse larger groups of related controls within a control area. Clicking on the small triangle will open and close the rollouts. Many of the standard controls can be enhanced by modifiers. Once a control has been attached to a modifier, its controls will appear in the second tab of the control area. As always, for the most up-to-date descriptions and details on Fusion, visit manual.vfxpedia.com.